OK, so we've got a nice little problem here where we need to calculate the sum of these arctans without using a calculator. And there's a nice trick way of doing this that we'll have a look at. And then at the end, we'll also have a look at where has this problem actually come from, which I think is equally interesting. And how could we come up with a similar problem and know that we're going to get a nice answer? So let's go into what is the trick method. And the trick is basically to use our knowledge of complex numbers. So let's say we've got a complex number a plus b times i. And just for simplicity, let's say that a and b are both positive. Then the argument of a plus b times i is basically this angle here. We could call it theta. And this is arctan of b over a. So this is how we can invoke our knowledge of complex numbers here. Basically, you can get arctan as the argument of a specific complex number. So for arctan one third, you'd have b is one and a is three. So it's the argument of three plus i. But how is this actually going to help us calculate the sum here? Well, remember, if you have the sum of arguments of complex numbers, let's think about where could that have come from. So if you multiply two complex numbers together, let's say you've got z1 and z2 are complex numbers, multiply them together, what's the argument of that going to be? This is going to be basically equal to the argument of z1 plus the argument of z2. And this is kind of true up to multiples of 2 pi, so we need to be a little bit careful when we're applying this rule because let's say the argument of z1 is quite big and so is the argument of z2 as well. If the sum of these is now bigger than pi, the convention is that we always take the argument of any complex number to be between positive pi and negative pi. So we might need to have some business there of subtracting 2 pi or a multiple of 2 pi. So we'll be a little bit careful when we're applying this rule, but it is generally kind of true up to multiples of 2 pi. Okay, so we'll use this then to try and evaluate this sum. So if I call the sum, let's just call this sigma. So this is going to be arctan of one third. If you think we've got b is one, a is three, we'll just choose this as a nice simple complex number to work with. So this is going to be the argument of three plus one times i, so just three plus i, and plus the argument of five plus i. Then we've also got to add in the argument of seven plus i, and the argument of eight plus i. Then using our sort of trick here of turning the sum of arguments into the argument of the product, We'll be a little bit careful when we actually do the multiplication, but basically this should be roughly equal to the argument of 3 plus i multiplied by 5 plus i multiplied by 7 plus i, and then finally multiplied by 8 plus i. So what we'll do next is we'll actually do this multiplication of all of these complex numbers, we'll find out what the argument is, and then we'll make sure that we're not off by a factor of 2 pi. So let's calculate the product of all of these complex numbers, and we'll just do this one step at a time. So we start off by multiplying 3 plus i by 5 plus i. The real part of this is going to be 3 times 5 is 15. Then you also take away 1 from the i times i there, and you get 14 as your real part. So what's your imaginary part? Well, 5 times i is 5, and you've also got 3 times i gives you plus another 3. So you get plus 8i. 8 is our imaginary part there. So now we need to multiply this by 7 plus i, and then at the end we'll multiply by 8 plus i as well. So I'm multiplying by 7 plus i, what's our real part going to be? 14 sevens are 98. Then we're going to take away an 8 from the 8i times i term, so we get 90 as our real part. Then our imaginary part, we've got 14 times i, which gives us 14. Then we've also got 7 times 8, which is 56. So adding these together gives you 70i. Then finally, we still need to multiply by 8 plus i. So the numbers are getting a bit bigger. It's a little bit harder, but 90 times 8 is 720. And we take away a 70 term from the 70i times i. This gives us 650 as our final real part then. And our imaginary part, what have we got? 70 times 8, this is 560, plus 90, which gives us 650i. So this is actually very nice, because if you draw a little picture, what does this complex number look like in your complex plane? Well, we've got an isosceles right angle triangle here. So you know that this angle, or the argument of this complex number, is just going to be pi over 4, or 45 degrees. So the argument of 650 plus 650i, because the real part's equal to the imaginary part, is going to be equal to pi over 4. So now we need to just double check that we haven't actually made a mistake here and we're not out by some sort of multiple of 2 pi. And it turns out that this is actually going to be fine. 
because let's think, we start off with 3 plus i, this is in this first quadrant where your real and imaginary parts are both positive. We multiply this by 5 plus i, we've got 14 plus 8i, so we're still in this first quadrant, we haven't moved, we're certainly not wrapping around getting a really big answer for our sum of all the arguments. We multiply this by 7 plus i again, we've now got 90 plus 70i, we're still in this quadrant, and then finally 650 plus 650i, once again we're still in this positive quadrant. So actually it turns out for this example that the arguments of all of these complex numbers are so small that when we add them all together we do just get pi over 4. So we can conclude then that arctan of one third plus arctan of one fifth, really nice satisfying identity here, plus arctan of one seventh plus arctan of one eighth, this is indeed equal to pi over 4. So we're going to finish off by just having a little look kind of behind the scenes of this problem. So where has this problem come from? Demystify this and show how you could come up with something kind of like this. So the starting point is just to pick a nice complex number. So I chose 1 plus i for this problem. And the argument of this we know is equal to pi over 4. Then there's a trick involved in turning this into something that looks much more complicated but still has a nice answer. And the trick that we're going to use is we're again drawing on our knowledge of complex numbers. So if you've got 1 plus i, let's imagine we multiply this by another complex number, a plus bi, but we also multiply by its complex conjugate, a minus bi. What is the argument of this going to be? Well, we know that the argument of a minus bi is actually just the negative of the argument of a plus bi. So when we multiply by both of these together, we can basically just ignore these in terms of the argument. So the argument is still going to be pi over 4, so the two contributions to the argument from the complex conjugates cancel out. And there's nothing stopping us from multiplying by more than one pair of complex conjugates, and that's kind of what we need to do here to come up with this problem. So what I did in the end was I took the argument of 1 plus i, I multiplied this by 2 plus i and 2 minus i, also by 3 plus i, 3 minus i, and finally by 5 plus i, and 5 minus i. So they're all nice complex conjugate pairs, so you know that the contributions from these don't add anything to the argument, so the final argument is still equal to pi over 4. And there's nothing stopping us from taking this product and multiplying them in slightly different orders and splitting them up into smaller pieces, which is exactly what we need to do. So the argument of 3 plus i, we'll take this as our first term, and this is where our arctan of one third piece came from. So let's cross this one out, we've used that now. The next one that we're going to use is going to be the 5 plus i, which gives us our arctan of 1 fifth. So we know that all of this is equal to arctan of a third plus arctan of a fifth. And then what we'll do for our next piece is we could combine more than one into one piece. So we'll take 2 plus i and we'll also take 3 minus i. So we get the argument of 2 plus i multiplied by 3 minus i for our next piece. And when you multiply these, 2 plus i times 3 minus i, this turns out to be equal to 7 plus i, which is particularly nice because then we get a contribution of arctan 1 seventh here. And then it's just a matter of including the remaining three terms here, so 1 plus i, 2 minus i, and 5 minus i. So we add in the argument of 1 plus i, 2 minus i, 5 minus i. And when you multiply all of these complex numbers together, this is actually equal to 2 into 8 plus i. So it doesn't really matter that you've multiplied by 2, all that you care about is that the argument of this is going to be arctan of 1 eighth, the same as the argument of 8 plus i. And there's nothing to say that, of course, you're going to get really nice answers with, with nice fractions to begin with. There is definitely some trial and error involved, so I had to tweak the numbers quite a lot here. But if you start off with a nice complex number, multiply by some complex conjugate pairs, you can split it up in different ways, see what you get. You could be able to come up with something even more elegant than this, perhaps. There's a really nice result out there, which actually inspired this video, that arctan of 1 plus arctan of 2 plus arctan of 3 is equal to pi. And you can show that using the same sort of approach. So do have a go if you're interested, and see if you can come up with your own little result like this.